Hi, this is Aria Rao from the Science Squad, and today for the June lecture, we're going to be showcasing a variety of different research labs at the University of Chicago from the perspective of high school students working in those labs right now during the summer. I'm one of those students, and I'm really grateful for this opportunity to work with Dr. Martin Kreitman on campus, studying neonatal diabetes in his particular model organism, the Drosophila melanogaster, or the common fruit fly. And so we're studying how genetic variation impacts the severity of the disease. And to do that, we're essentially treating a bunch of flies with the diabetes, and we're observing how flies with different genotypes uh, respond to the disease. And so we've been constructing a genome library with all of these different genotypes, and we have the data for how they respond to the diabetes and so by creating this massive genome library we have a really wide spectrum of results showing how diabetes is uh, affected by genotype and this can be easily translated to humans since the genetic pathways in flies are very similar to the ones in humans despite the large physical differences and so without further ado i'm going to turn this video over to some of the most talented high schoolers in the nation and in the world to talk about their research. So here goes. All right, everybody, this is Scott. He is going to be talking a little about himself and his research. So go for it, Scott. All right, uh, as you said, my name is Scott. I am from Iowa and I will be attending for free at my dad, Drake University in the fall. Uh, and I am currently working uh, in the lab under Urs Schmidt Ott here at the University of Chicago. Uh, the goal of his lab is to uh, check uh, where in the phylogenetic tree different changes in developmental biology arose. You may have heard of Drosophila melanogaster. That is the most common uh, of the fly model organisms. Uh, but Urs uh, works with other flies to see where different splits in the phylogenetic uh, tree occurred. So we understand a lot of what genes regulate the development in Drosophila, uh, and so we're looking to see where those changes happen uh, going back in history. So we look at different fly species such as Acronymus, Clognia, and Hermitsia. And Hermitsia. <laughs> I personally take, fair, take care of the acronymous flies, so each day I go into the lab and I pluck them all out of the air with an air tube and then we send them to debris. Uh, that way we can maintain a life culture. All right, Scott, what's the importance of creating an accurate phylogenetic tree? All right, so if we understand where those changes occur, it's important for evolutionary biology. Um, so if we know where those changes happen, we can sometimes infer why those changes happened. Uh, and the better we can understand how different species uh, originate and develop, the better we can understand how we as a species originated and continue to develop. All right, any last words, Scott? Would you rather kiss an alien stuff upon <laughs> or a beautiful corpse, children? Okay, say it, I shall go and get okay. back. Okay, no, no, okay. Uh, say that again, though. All right, Scott, is there anything else you'd like to say? What I was going to say doesn't make sense with how you said that. Okay. Uh, I'll just do this. No, wait. All the... <laughs> <laughs> this... How should I say this? I don't know. Uh, hmm. I know how I want to say goodbye. I don't have anything else to add. All right, Scott. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us. All the best. Hi, uh, my name is Danilo Bushkin. I'm a student here at Ribs 2 for uh, the University of Chicago Summer Research Program. And in my lab, I'm working on uh, testing different insect and pathogen resistances to uh, certain plants. For this lab, basically what we have is about 2,000 different plants that are all growing in this giant growing room. The plant itself is Arabidopsis thaliana, which is a mustard. It looks like a weed. And in these, uh, out of these 2,000 plants, we have about 300 different genotypes that we're testing. A genotype is basically the same type of plant, however, there is some genetic difference inside its DNA. Perhaps it's more resistant, less resistant, maybe has four leaves instead of five. However, they're more or less the same plant, minus those small changes. For our lab, 
we're trying to introduce different insects at the same time to a whole collection of these plants that are all located on a single flat. We take before and after pictures of the leaves of this plant and we measure to see how the insects affected this. For example, by introducing a black beetle onto this plant over the course of a day or two, we can observe that some of the leaves begin to wither and die as the beetle eats it. We do this and we record these results in order to see whether or not the bugs prefer or, or do not prefer certain types of plants. This information is important because once we know whether or not they like this plant, then we can compare whether or not this is correlated by genotype. For example, do they always go for a plant genotype B rather than plant genotype C? Or do they prefer plant genotype D and instead avoid both B and C? All this data is then taken together and mapped with the computer and compared statistically. This gives us an overall trend of whether or not there are any genes in these plants that give them any resistance or make them more susceptible to the beetles. The overall purpose of this research, I guess, is to see if we can actually categorize specific genes that help it resist or be susceptible to plants, to uh, certain types of insects and uh, different pathogens. Once we can categorize these genes, they can be later used in things like crop modification in order to naturally increase some plant's resistance against some common pest, like a beetle or another uh, pest that we're working more with thrips. Our data is only going to be available in about two weeks when we begin testing. However, just today we introduced all the plants to the beetles and we're going to be monitoring their progress over the course of a week. In the end, we hope that there is some type of variation in the plants that gives them the resistance or susceptibility to the beetles. However, there's also the chance that the beetles will just eat everything and that the plant has no natural resistance. Catherine, um, I live in Shanghai and I'm currently working in Hen Shi's lab and so we're um, focusing on this pathway that utilizes um, peewee proteins which are a class of uh, um, agronaut proteins which play a role in RNAi and um, so we're trying to figure out the genes that are necessary for this pathway to occur and so we're doing that um, we're trying to pr um, find data for that by um, performing a bunch of RNAi experiments to knock out certain genes and to see which one um, is critical for this pathway. And then they're also trying to figure out, um, so there's a phenomenon known as co-suppression, where if you insert a plasmid with uh, multiple copies of a gene that's in um, the worm, then it will the that gene in the worm will be silenced silence as well and so the mechanism by which that works isn't clear and so Henshi thinks that um, peewee proteins and this pathway has a role in this gross suppression phenomenon and so yeah <laughs> yeah go okay hello everyone my name is William Marcus I am from Augusta Georgia and I'm here at U Chicago with Aria researching about DNA but it's a little, more, a little bit more complex than that. So in my lab, before we actually go into my actual project that I'm working on, I'm gonna to talk to you about the structure of the genome. At the, at, what you're made of is only 2% genes. So what do you think the other 98% is? Well, we don't really know, but we know some parts and some parts that our lab is working on are called enhancers. And enhancers, as you can suspect, enhance the production of mRNA in genes, or enhance the expression of genes. So that's where, what we're studying. We're seeing the uh, effects of enhancers, we're trying to find enhancers, and that's what I'm doing in my actual project. In a previous manuscript that uh, my lab wrote, they tried to publish it, and they received comments back saying uh, they want concrete evidence that these enhancers are actually enhancers. So I'm receiving these sequences of DNA that we suspect are enhancers, uh, and then we have duplicate regions that are mutated. So we suspect that the mutated regions that we suspect to be enhancers will not work, and the normal ones will. So we're transfecting that, meaning putting it into cells, 
we're transfecting it into mouse heart cells and seeing if they are enhancers or not by the expression of a reporter gene, um, such as GFP, green fluorescent protein, where it will light up if it's an enhancer or not. So we suspect that the enhancer sequences will light up and the mutated enhancers, of course, will not work and hopefully will not light up.